Greetings, greetings everybody. It's good to see you. Welcome to Hope for Africa. What a blessing to have you watching and we believe that the programs from this place are also a blessing to you. I bring you greetings from the University of Eastern Africa Baraton where we do a lot of studies in all areas, all levels and we have discovered that family is very important and we create families for even our students. Ladies and gentlemen, the foundation of every building is very critical. Do you know that the foundation of your life is your family? If your family is not okay, you can't operate well in business, your health can't be okay, you can't work well anywhere, you can't assert yourself properly, you can't study well, it is time to take care of family. And Pastor David Mbaga coming all the way from Dodoma, Tanzania is right here coming before you to present this message. Have you ever wondered why some couples succeed and why some couples fail? Think about it. Why do some couples seem to be doing so well? Why do some couples seem to be doing poorly? Why? The answer will come with Pastor David Mbaga. Welcome. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, before we start our program, I would like to mention some prayer requests. We have about 12 of them. But this evening we'll be praying for just some of them, about four of them. And then uh, I will call Pastor Ray for, for prayer. Number one, we have... Uh, our brother, uh, he says the wife left him with kids and is praying that God may sustain them and give him wisdom and means to provide for them. Okay. The other one says his elder brother separated with his wife and prays that God may help them and also provide for them. Uh, praying that God may restore peace in her family and to lead her husband from unfaithfulness. The husband is abusing her children, grandchildren sexually, and even animals. Yes, I think this has to do with psychological problems. She separated with her alcoholic husband, and the man now threatens her life and causing disruption in her life. The last one, she has three female children, and the husband has refused to recognize the children as his because they are girls we need a prayer pastor you are welcome for prayer may we stand for the word of prayer to pray for our friends our dear heavenly father you created family and when family is in trouble we come back to you there is a family facing challenges because of alcohol. We pray for your intervention. We pray that you may remove appetite for alcohol. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you will liberate this family. We want to bring before you a family where the man is moving away because he only has girls. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you will open his eyes. Yes not just to know the science that he could be responsible scientifically for the girls but the girls can end up being a greater blessing than the boys he is imagining and he has not seen mm -hmm. into your hands we place these requests because nothing is impossible with you mm -hmm. accept this request favor your children in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen amen Thank you, Pastor. Why some couples succeed and others fail? This is a very big question. Um, when I talk to young people, one of the th things I would like them to, to ponder in their life is, there is a saying that we have to learn from our own mistakes is good, but we have people who have been made a lot of mistakes in their lives, we can learn from them. 
If you take enough time to read stories of other people, you see the way people are doing in their marriages, you can learn a lot. Yes, learn from your own mistake, but spend a lot of time to read and start other research books to know why others can succeed and yours is not succeeding. Nothing new under the sun. Hallelujah. Whatever you are going through, somebody else has gone through the same thing. Just take time and listen. Take time and start. Take time to, to read. We, we have a generation which wants to conclude things. They don't want to read. They don't want to take time to research on things. They're just running to conclusion because we have very few thinkers but we have a lot of people who want to conclude things. Are we together? Just shake hand of your neighbor and say, are we together? Thinkers are very few nowadays. If, if you want to know that I'm right, just post anything on social media. Just post anything. You may lead people wherever you want them to be. But very few people will ask critical questions. Is this true? What is the source of information? Can I take this? Nowadays when we look at many uh, marriages, couple are, are just thinking that you can maintain your marriage if you have money. And they say that money is everything. But I told you that there are some people with a lot of money, but they are not happy at all. There are people who have everything you want, but they don't enjoy marriage. Marriage is more than money. Hallelujah. It needs wisdom and understanding. Why some cups succeed and others fail? Dr. John Gottman and his team, by the way, if you want to read a lot of researches about marriage, read the books by Dr. Uh, Dr. John Gottman. He's one of the scholars. I respect them when it comes to relationship issues. Why? He has done a lot of research. Dr. John Gottman, with his team, they conducted research. The aim of their research was to answer the following questions. Why is marriage so tough at times? Why do some lifelong relationships click while others just tick away like a time bomb? And how can you prevent your marriage from going bad or rescue one that is already in trouble? They needed to answer these questions. Can you save your marriage from breakup? I, I believe maybe I'm talking to some people who are just at the end of the marriage. You are just at the edge of it. You think nothing can go on. Things have fallen apart. But tonight, I'm giving you good news. You can save your marriage. Hallelujah. In the book of Mark chapter 9, verse 23, NIV Bible, the Bible says, If you can save Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes if you believe god can save your marriage one of the reasons dr gottman and the team discovered is if you see any marriage succeed one of the reasons they have so-called emotional intelligence hallelujah hallelujah they have so-called emotional intelligence i'm talking to different people like ceo of the companies managers directors one of the things i do tell them when i'm talking to them in different companies is make sure that you can control your emotions hallelujah i remember back home one day during political campaigns um, in CCM part, there were two people who were fighting each other politically. And then when the other one just stood to address the meeting, 
the friend uh, arranged a person who will provoke the one who is speaking. Are we together? So when he was just there addressing the meeting, somebody raised up their hand and said, I have a question for you. He said, go on and ask. Um, have you stopped beating your wife? <laughs> then the other one was furious. How can you ask me such a question before people? Who told you that I'm beating my wife? Eh, a lot of words. And the other one, when he stood up, he just say, Friends, this is the person who wants to be a member of a parliament. Now you see the way he responded from just one question. In the parliament, they'll be asking him a lot of questions. And he will not be able to defend you. So you better choose me for you. It was simple like that. The guy is finished. Let me give you one simple psychological technique. If somebody insults you before people, control your emotions. Just look at him direct to the eyes and ask him, have you finished? You are the winner. Hallelujah. If you only know how to control your emotions. Back home in Tanzania, about 10 years ago, we had a president called uh, Jakaya Mrisho Kikweta. I think you know the person. One of the people who I do appreciate, one of the presidents who has high emotional intelligence is President Kikwete. You can insult him before people, say whatever you want, he's just smiling at you. And at the end, you become a fool. And he wins. Emotional intelligence is very important than IQ. You have A's, you have very good GPA, but if you can't control your emotions, you have to think twice. What is emotional intelligence? Emotional intelligence, otherwise known as emotional quotient or EQ, is the ability to understand use and manage your own emotions in positive ways to relieve stress, communicate effectively, empathize with others, overcome challenges, and diffuse conflicts. Yes. Emotional intelligence helps you to build strong relationships, succeed at school and work, and achieve your career and personal goals. Some of you who are watching me online, you know this story. One day I was in uh, uh, one of our regions, Tanzania, called Iringa. I was there, and there is a person who was looking for me for a long time, long time. And it happened, lo and behold, we meet each other. And then the husband told her, here is the pastor, talk to him and then she ended up saying wow i don't believe that i see you now i told her tell me say, i'm speechless <laughs> i told her can you tell me what's your problem pastor everything has operated i don't remember anything am i dreaming am i seeing you then she ended up touching my hand. Is this you? That was it. If she could control her emotion, she could speak. Most of us, you can lose job just because of your emotions. Listen to this. 
there is no need of responding to every question you are asked are we together don't spend your time defending yourself every time sometimes silence is perfect hallelujah why emotional intelligence is very important number one it will help you in work more than intelligence quotient as i said you may find some people when they quarrel with their bosses they will tell you i'm quitting the job i will not come here anymore yes you are quitting the job it's okay but who is losing you your boss or you just go somewhere relax one of the methods i'm using to control my emotion is so called breathing technique breathe in breathe out just breathe in breathe out for some times and 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 i can use the other one you can just you, you can just hold your hands like this one and try to massage your fingers you will control your emotions Emotional intelligence is good for mental health. Yes. When you find or you hear these stories like people have committed suicide, they have killed uh, family members because of uh, marriage issues, the problem is emotional intelligence. Back home, I don't know, here in Kenya, will tell me if the same thing happens. Back home, we had a story of a person who killed three children and the wife. Why? He just found that one of the kid is not his after DNA test. And then he decided to kill three children, including his own children and the wife. If you feel as if you can't control your, your emotions, go away. Uncontrolled emotions and stress can also impact your mental health making you vulnerable to anxiety and depression by the way most of the things which gives us depression and anxiety they are just the way we think i told you previous that when you change the way you look at things things you look at will change nothing just happens everything happens for a purpose if somebody insults you, God wants you to learn something. Hallelujah. Yes. God wants to learn something. So take everything positive. If somebody steps on you, God wants you to learn self-control. Hallelujah. Nothing just happens. Control your emotions. Emotional intelligence is very good for health relationship i remember one day when i was teaching this somebody said pastor you are married i said yes do you get angry I said yes i'm a human being how do you control that so when i feel that i just pray hallelujah you pray if you don't get angry maybe you have a problem you are not okay <laughs> something is wrong with you it's like when you tell me that you don't get stressed then something is wrong with you you must be stressed that's normal but don't allow it to go for a long time because it will kill you in relationship if you feel as if you can't control your emotion and 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 you are your wife or husband wants you to talk it's good to be open just tell her or him i feel like keeping quiet because if i'll be talking i might mention something which is not good and i love you i don't want to hurt you that is maturity by understanding your emotions and how you uh, to control them you are better able to express how you feel and understand how others are feeling emotional intelligence is good for social intelligence also 
You know, there are some people who can mingle with anybody in the group. Have you ever seen such kind of people? They can mingle with anybody. But there are some people can mingle only with few people. I know I have a friend of mine when I'm with him, some people say, Pastor, how can you cope with this guy? I say, I know how he acts. And I control my emotions also. But there are some people they can mingle with anybody. These people know how to control their emotions. Being in tune with your emotions serves as a social purpose connecting you to other people and the world around you. When you hear that some people are more lovable than others. Everybody loves him. Everybody loves her. Everybody cheers. It doesn't mean that they just fell from heaven. No. These people know how to cope with people. You can do the same in your own marriage. Hallelujah. Yes, you can learn this. Drigger says, Give us some key signs and examples of emotional intelligence and personal make sure. Number one. An ability to identify and describe what people are feeling. Let me stop there a bit. This is special for church elders and pastors. When somebody comes in your office, they may tell you something which is, to you is nothing, but to the person is something. If you can support her emotions, maybe she is crying like me when you get into my office and you are crying, I will never tell you keep quiet. The only thing I will do, I will give you more tissue papers. So that you can cry more. Because crying is a healing. Hallelujah. We need it. Yes. So, if you, you have emotional intelligence, you will know how others feel. So when, when you actually want to do something, you will do it with precautions. I am sure that you cannot control yourself from offending, not offending everyone. You are not God. Even God offends some people. In quote. But if you know emotional intelligence, you will know how people react the way they feel. You will be able to read their faces, the way they talk. And then you will know how to, to keep your demarcation when you are talking. You know my boundary is here. I will not talk more. I have to keep quiet. Because the more I talk, I offend somebody. And emotional intelligence will help you to make more friends. Hallelujah. An awareness of personal strength and limitations. If you know that you are hot tempered, but I, I believe the Holy Spirit can help you to control that. Hallelujah. You may, you may know the symptoms of your own body, own reaction, and then you will say, The way I feel, I will not stand before people, I will not do this and this. I remember one day one of our leaders back home in Tanzania, she was addressing a meeting and then the time was over and somebody came with a, just a, a single paper and placed on the pulpit like this one there. And then she left. Then the leader just read the paper. I am not sure, but I think the paper was written, your time is over. in front of the cameras microphone everybody's watching you and then just look at it and they said what are you doing to me when so and so was talking here you never say time is over and, and you know when you are a leader any leader there are some people who loves you there are some people who hates you there are some people who loves you for nothing. There are some people who hates you for nothing. There are some people who are just waiting for your single mistake to publish it. So when you see leaders, just pray for them. Just a single mistake 
accosted the person. But if she was being trained in emotional intelligence, you can see the paper and say, thank you, we will talk tomorrow, it is done. Emotional intelligence, self-confidence and self-acceptance, the ability to let go of mistakes, an ability to accept and embrace change. Why am I mentioning these things here? If you can't control your emotion, you will be a slave of your past mistakes. So every time when you want to move, something comes and reminds you of your mistakes. And you feel depressed as if you can't move anymore. But let me tell you, no one is perfect. We all make mistakes. But the only thing I want you to take this night, forget your mistakes. Keep going. Hallelujah. Just learn how you can change we can control our emotions a strong sense of curiosity particularly about other people feeling of empathy and concern for others showing sensitivity to the feeling of other people accepting responsibility for mistakes and the ability to manage emotions in difficult situations yes before i'm winding up this one Anyone who has this so-called emotional intelligence, you'll be able to understand how others feel. And you will show sensitivity to the feeling of other people. If we find that you don't care when you hurt others, you have something wrong mentally. I see, uh, you can see maybe somebody has fallen somewhere, and then you are laughing that is the sign of mental problem <laughs> we don't laugh when we see that but we take charge of saving the person did you know that social media is destroying our emotional intelligence we can see an accident there instead of saving a person we take pictures recording the video you want to be the first one to post on facebook and some has gone far they can even take selfie we are here live You don't feel bad when you see others are dying there. When I'm teaching about fasting, I do tell people that we can fast from food, water, and something, but we have to fast from social media also. That's a kind of, of fasting also. Just switch off your mobile phone, stay away from it. No Facebook, no Instagram, no WhatsApp, nothing. Take time. Stay away from these things. Control your mind. Social media, if you don't control it, it will destroy your emotional intelligence. May the Lord help us. Tomorrow onward, we'll go deeper. Let's stand for the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of Holy Spirit. Because after reading all these emotional intelligence issues, at the end we are concluding that we have the Holy Spirit that can help us to control ourselves. I know maybe someone is watching tonight. He or she is suffering from anger, hot-tempered, he has tried his level best to control anger, but he cannot control. I'm praying for the person tonight. Because you are the one who can help us. You created us. Help us to control our emotions. 
Many marriages ended up to divorce because of uncontrolled emotions. But tonight, when we are with you, you will give us wisdom and understanding how to control this. And at the end, marriage and our home will be like paradise. Thank you because you are going to do more than we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.